concepts in this video are best understood when we comprehend the perspective of those that control the most extensive and most inclusive largest laundering system uh, possibly historically but at least at this current time on the planet and they see all of us as cattle essentially herdsmen will cultivate cattle to take value from them for themselves as part of the essential animal farm. And we are included with all animals in this and they attempt to make all animals quote unquote tame in order to be cultivated for their benefit. They teach us that we are herd animals and that all animals depend on a group such as with wolves. Wolves are dependent upon the pack and the lone wolf is quote unquote weaker than the group is incapable of acting effectively without the over the protective um, control of the group. Now, we also find an example of this when it comes to the concept of bullying and specifically how it's represented today, where those that are bullied are victims incapable of standing for themselves, and thus they require the group who are. Uh, Ironically, the bullyers to protect the bully. It's quite a ridiculous concept, but it is required to teach people that they are all members of a herd and that they cannot function as an individual. They require their herd and their herd requires them. And so you are enslaved to the group and they do not want you to be wild. They want to be to be tame so that you are a member of their cultivated cattle herd. This is in contrast to the concepts that are taught in the movie, The Karate Kid, in which the karate, old karate master who is trained by his fisherman father, not in fact a licensed practitioner or anything like that, but a fisherman, right? A humble fisherman taught him how to stand up for himself, defend himself and not be a victim to bullies, which he in turn teaches to the protagonist who is a kid ironically being bullied by a group one of the primary concepts in this movie that is diametrically opposed to the herd concept is the fact that an individual can overpower multiples when that individual is far stronger far more capable than those multiples and understands how to contend with the group as an individual and thus it shows the empowerment of the individual over the group and is a huge problem for those that seek to keep us in a herd as what many refer to as the herd mentality, the idea of being a victim and being weak and being unable to defend oneself as an individual and requiring a group of people for this purpose. Now, in the US Constitution, it states, to promote the progress of science and useful arts by securing for limited times to authors and inventors the exclusive rights to their respective writings and discoveries. The reason why this passage is important is because it specifically separates the exclusivity to authors and inventors. That is a huge problem for those that seek to see, see us as herd, as cattle, as, a, as their property, essentially. Anything that we have is theirs. And so the idea of exclusivity to an individual is abhorrent to them. Most of their stuff is operated off of one section in the constitution, which is the deprivation of rights uh, of property without due process. Now, they have all of these ways to take and steal our property and they see us as their property and so therefore all our property is theirs. And so they usually never focus on that one. And they conveniently ignore the one section that specifically refers to exclusivity to authors and inventors. The reason for this is because they want to steal the most, well, one of the most valuable things but is for specifically for their concept of cultivating the herd and that is the theft of not only intellectual property ideas and whatnot but specifically anything that could damage their control over the herd anything that would empower individuals within the herd and would then make them untamed or wild so the exclusivity of authors and inventors is specifically a problem so they need 
they have to ignore that concept and they have to make <clears throat> everyone completely and absolutely utterly dependent upon the collective or the herd. And they have all these mechanisms to spot when an individual is doing things that will damage that control over the herd. And so they have absolutely no issue of violating the exclusivity because in their eyes, we are all part of their cattle. One of the thir first things that they do with this is the so-called copyright. In the primary system that we have today, if you do not copyright your works, then you are not protected. Where, if you copyright your work, especially with these so-called official authorities, then it becomes their property. It is one of those cases where you're either damned if you do or damned if you don't. Their property is yours either way, as far as they see it. They'll either steal it because you didn't protect it, from them, of course, or they'll steal it because you did protect it with them because you signed it over as their property. The same thing can be found with patents, and this has to do specifically with the exclusivity to the discovery of inventors. Patents are designed so that they can, and under that guise, so that they can steal your ideas. If you don't patent it, it's not protected, and therefore they'll take it, and then you have no recourse. And if you do patent it, then they took it because you signed it over to them. It's a catch-22. You cannot win as an individual. This is uh, referred to usually as the concept of the Trojan horse, in which a false wooden horse filled with enemies is brought in under the guise of peace or a, a gesture, which, whereas everybody accepts it in under the false pretense, they're all destroyed by it because it was designed for that purpose. Another way that they do this laundering of author ideas or authorship and uh, discoveries for theft is through the collaborative methods, the collaborative network, the groups of people all working together so that they can hide things among the mass. We find this very evidently on social media with all the collaborative groups, especially Facebook, that provide content to be stolen under the guise of the collaborative group where somebody will work on something and then the group was set up as essentially a reaping source where they can reap the ideas from individuals and take them for profit, giving absolutely no credit to the individuals because it came from quote unquote the group. Now, another mechanism that they control, of which they control virtually all mechanisms that we're aware of today, is the library system. The library system is a, a corporation operating under the guise of a government, and they work directly with large publishers to control the herd, control access, and control the flow of ideas. And with the big publishing houses and the libraries, nowadays they generally refer to the, the component or mechanisms that they use as Ingram. Ingram is one of the most common systems that are shared between the two for the purposes of censorship and the acquisition of intellectual property. In all cases, they control authors and the inventors and discoverers that might be authors in some way because libraries and publishing houses generally have to do with writings and things like that, violating the exclusivity of writers, of course, of authors to the writings. Well, they do this so that they can not only acquire and take this as their property, so there is no such thing as individual property, but also so that they can ensure that nothing which might damage their control over the cultivated herd will get through but there's always slips, uh, cracks in the system, and there's always things to get through, which they then have to instantly address and revise and remove, such as with the example of the Game of Thrones. In fact, generally speaking, when you have a drop in quality or a dy dynamic change in the content of something, it's usually evidence of one of two things. Either they're changing things and trying to diminish it, remove its impact on the herd, or they have, in fact, lost their ability to reap the ideas from otherwise ignorant individuals that have ascribed their stuff to a group, not realizing that that group was designed to steal all of their work. In this way, they can control what ends up on bookshelves and what you're allowed to see. Across the spectrum, this global censorship machine is designed for one purpose, and that's to keep control over the human herd. 
Now, one of the most egregious offenses against the exclusivity of authors, as it's referenced in the Constitution to their writings, is the act of revising or revisionism, which is particularly evident when it comes to publishing houses and universities. This is also referred to as the review process, or you could reword it as to re-see. It's taking something in its original form and then changing it so that it appears as something else. That is revisionism and is possibly one of the most insidious offenses against the exclusivity of authors. Now, the primary mechanisms that they have in order to do this is what's called the review process, where a book is submitted to not only standard publishers, but in fact, all independent publishing outlets are now like this because they're all controlled by the standard publishing publishers and it is all hand in hand. Uh, one hand washes the other. It's the so-called corporate government working with the o overt corporations all together to maintain control over the herd. And they have all of these extensive review processes to look at content, to determine what needs to be suppressed, what needs to be revised, and what is exactly what they're looking for, those three things. This review process usually involves multiple layers of individuals where one person looks at it, and then another person looks at it, and then another person looks at it. And this is all done for one specific purpose, it is to remove the impact of an individual on the herd so that the only thing that remains is the herd and that individual is erased from it, that individual who can cause damage to their control. One of the other places where you find this laundering concept being practiced is in travel. You see, they control travel through these documents that we call visas and passports and whatnot. All of these documents of identification, driver's licenses, for instance, a lot of us think in travel as only immigration flying from one state to the other, but they actually control every single mechanism of human travel, even by foot. And they do this mostly through a network of paper and arbitrary control systems so in that way, when they control the movement of everyone, they can embed and hide all of their own agents and operatives among the masses so you can't find them and they quietly go around monitoring and controlling the herd. Those are your their version of what a shepherd is. They shepherd the herd so that though any individual that shows damage to the their control over the herd can be quietly eliminated among the masses and you can't find them because they are actually laundering identity. They can also steal people's identities with impunity, and it's extremely difficult to stop this because the whole system is designed for that purpose. Now, when it comes to the writing over authorship, as uh, suggested before, they take one part of the Constitution in order to, uh, it, to, they construe one part of the Constitution to disparage the rights of another, which is actually specifically said specifically prohibited by the Constitution itself. The states can't do that, but they do it anyway because they're not bound by the Constitution. They simply act under the color of it, and we are all uh, brainwashed into believing that they're the only ones that can control that document when, in fact, that document was not written for them. It was specifically written against them. Usually, the individual will have to sign over their rights to a group, and then once that group takes control of it, they can do whatever they want because it is now their property and not the property of the author, thus violating exclusivity of author. But once the author signs it over, they have no more control over it. It is taken and administered at, at will by the entities who fraudulently acquired the what they call the exclusive rights as part of the deprivation of rights without due process of law, property, intellectual property rights and all that. And in that case, the author can do nothing about them misusing and abusing that, that person's work for their own gain and for and actually against the intentions that the author might have had originally. This is diametrically opposed to the concept in the Marine Corps of small unit leadership. This is where an individual becomes empowered because that individual knows specifically how to achieve their goals, their achieve the mission, right? So like a mission is put out and then in the small unit leadership model, each individual leader will carry it out because they know how to best achieve the objective. And in that case, it is not this inherently faulty hierarchical top-down control structure that we find today. 
Although you do find the small unit leadership, in fact, employed in a lot of these mechanisms where you will have somebody who is beholden to the standard publishing houses, as they're usually called, against the independent authorship areas. But in fact, both are equally controlled because at each level you have administrators and all of those administrators know what their job is. And you'll have here and there, you'll have controllers, usually linked in some way to, to a publishing conglomerate. And they will go around manipulating things behind the scenes to ensure that nothing gets past these sensors. Naturally, when you have a small unit, an independent structure that is not ad an adherent of the system, well, then that shines the light on fraud, which makes it very difficult for them to launder their their mission, their uh, operations of mind control and behavioral modification and all these other things they do. Well, they can't do it because when you put the gen genuine article next uh, up next to a forgery, it becomes very obvious it's a forgery. So instead of saying we need to get rid of the forgery, they say we need to get rid of the genuine article. Make sure that the original is never seen and the only thing that you're allowed to see is the forgery. Thank you. If you've enjoyed this content, please uh, check out my free books that are available at the link. They are available in English and Spanish, although I have done writings in other languages as well, including Italian, Portuguese, Romanian, some in French. Also, if you so desire, you may support my work at any of the options available, which include Venmo, PayPal, and also buy me a coffee and Cash App. Thank you. <laughs>